Uh, good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here today. You have busy schedules and a lot of work, yet you have prioritized the worksite wellness program here. So today we'll be talking about how healthy eating can affect health at worksite. Just give you a gist about nutrition. It is the science that deals with digestion, absorption, and metabolism of food. That is the utilization of food in the body. So digestion, as you all know, it is breaking down of complex food into simple substances, absorption, transfer of simple digested food into the bloodstream, metabolism, chemical reactions which break down complex food into simple substances and release energy. Wellness is described as the healthy state of balance between the physical condition, the mental activities, and the biochemical reactions of a human. It's more than the food, actually. You know, what happens is we keep on making decisions throughout the day. On an average, a person makes 227 food-related decisions daily. Whether to eat, what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, should I eat or should I not eat. So what one eats, activity levels, genetics, environment, all play a role in determining our body weight. Adults spend a large portion of their walking, uh, waking hours at work and consume at least one meal a day there, in addition to snacks. Workplaces are an ideal environment to promote healthy food choices, right? So the decisions that are impacted by our, the knowledge, the personal situations we are stuck in, the social environment, our physical environment, and how food is presented to us. Sometimes we really don't like what is being presented to us, though we had something else in the mind, right? So think about it. Every time you see food, you make decision to eat, eat it or not. The more food there is in the environment, the more likely an ind any individual is to eat it. If the food has little nutritional value and lots of calories, it will contribute more to weight gain and less to health. So why should we care, even care about the food at the workplace? See, on an average, at least eight hours of a day is spent at the work and 50% of the waking hours is spent at the work time. And almost four, because it's, if, if we talk about Delhi or any NCR or for that matter, any state, it is almost like two hours commuting time also. So in total, totality, it is 10 hours a day that we are spending waking, just moving around and ignoring our food. So if an employee can have access to many eating opportunities at work, for example, in the cafeteria, a vending machine is there, right? And you are having all, you are eating all those unhealthy options there, more, more so you're contributing more to the extra calories there, okay? Most of us, uh, Actually, what happens is this all making decisions, whether to eat food or not, it has been termed as decision fatigue. The more choices you make throughout the day, the harder each one becomes for your brain. So what happens is our brain has different kind of, it is different basically from the ordinary fatigue. You're not consciously aware of being tired, but you're low on mental energy. The more choices you make throughout the day, it is harder. And what happens is at the end of the day is your brain eventually gives up and it takes two routes. One is the shortcut in which we become reckless and take the hasty impulsive decisions of eating whatever we are getting. And another is the shortcut wherein the ultimate energy saver is that you do nothing and eat nothing. The consequences of all these things would be the reduced willpower, shortcuts, and empty calories that you'll have that you'll consume at the end of the day how much is too much okay we all talk about calories throughout the day you should have a chapati you should have you should not take rice or probably you should not have sweets well, how much calories do they have and when we consume it how much calories we are burning So 100 calories is equal to one small cookie, five chocolate covered with almonds, a muffin, a donut. And in order to expense that, you need at least 20 minutes of walk. And if you're not 
have that or if you will not walk what will happen these empty calories gonna pile up they're gonna start they're gonna stack up and result into obesity or overweight so this slide actually showed some example of snack food that we are using uh, i hope it is audible right Uh, can everyone please uh, just write at the question window whether they whether it is audible or not and whether it is clear or not All right. Thank you, everyone. Let's just proceed now. Taking, uh, taking a larger view, a country aims at producing at least 38 calories per person in a year. That is more than 2700 per person available for consumption. If we just keep on cutting the spoilage and the waste that has been happening. All right. The average person requires 2000 calories per day to maintain their weight and the body activities so that leaves minimum of 700 calories per person per day that are available for consumption given the earlier slide illustrating that 100 calorie additional calories per day can contribute up to 4.5 kgs annual weight gain the availability of additional calories in our environment could lead to even greater additional weight gain But what we eat is equally important as how we eat. Recent research in behavioral economics demonstrates that how we eat has a great deal of influence on what and how much we eat. Brian Van Sink at Cornell University has done considerable research on various environmental cues like the size of plates, product placement, portion sizes, and distracted eating that all influences what and how much we eat. In fact, in one of his studies, they fed people a meal prior to viewing a movie in a theater where they passed out stale three week old popcorns and they observed that at the end of the movie, everybody was finished with the popcorn. Right. So what I meant to say here is that when you're distracted, when you when your mind is not there on eating, you eat more. And you eat what is being given to you. Okay. Building a healthy lifestyle involves both choices and actions. A healthier lifestyle can be accomplished with the choices and actions that you make each day. And it is your choice. Nobody can may force you. Nobody can ask you to make a choice. And you have to start it from today. So let's just get energized. Tips. Eight tips for healthy eating would be a base your meals on starchy foods because why i'm saying here about starchy foods so if you go to any of the hospital you'll 
you see people telling do not have starchy meals 60% of your brain activity is because of the starch that you do that you take sorry right so if you not provide your brain with the required glucose your brain will stop functioning you will land up into confusion confused state of mind second is eat lots of fruits and vegetables again fruits and vegetables i really doubt because when i come across people and patients coming to me telling me ma'am we really don't have time to have fruits or vegetables the normal general question i ask them were you able to have a cup of so a glass of soda and the answer is yes so if you can spend 5 minutes having a soda why can't you spend 5 minutes having the fruits or vegetables eat more fish okay for vegetarians probably fish is not a thing but for non vegetarians rather than going for meat chickens fish is a safer option as it is high in omega 3 fatty acids cut down on saturated fat and sugar saturated fat okay fine we are talking about saturated fat here cutting down means do not just completely debar it from your diet but at least cut it down in your diet but it is required as much as you take your olive oils your mustard oils or any other kind of oil why because they mimic the synovial fluid that is present in our joints eat less salt that is important we indians tend to go overboard with the salt and in a recent study it has been shown the amount of salt or amount of sodium that should be consumed we are going 20 folds more than that and that is why you have low sodium salts now available in the market so switch to low sodium salt and eat less salt get active and be a healthy weight that is very important activity we'll do it we'll go for a walk but not doing it by thinking about it you'll never get active so you have to go out on a run and maintain a healthy weight that is very very important don't get thirsty if you have that feeling that you are feeling thirsty that means your body is already dehydrated and the most important thing do not never ever skip your breakfast so i'll be elaborating all these points first base your meals on starchy foods we should eat plenty of starchy foods these should make up a third of our diet as shown in the eat well plate uh, you might have seen the eat well plate that is like it is divided into four portions three portions one the major portion contributes on the starchy foods right the another third one third portion is your vegetables and fruits and one third portion is your dairy which is high in your calciums and proteins so starchy food they are the major source of energy and you know if you do not have energy in your body slowly steadily you will keep on getting dull you will be you will land up in a confused state and you lose on your health why should we choose whole grain varieties whenever possible it is because if we keep on just having a starchy food and no fiber along with it this food would be easily digested by our body and hence our sugar levels will start rising up why there is an epidemic on diabetes these days is because we are too much on refined we are too much dependent on refined carbohydrates most people need to eat more of these types of food so try to include an item from this group in each of your main meals how like for example in your breakfast have two slices of multigrain bread or two stuffed chapatis at lunch have two chapatis or probably if you're going out with friends you can have a whole wheat pasta you can go with whole wheat noodles you can go with a uh, spaghetti at dinner as we say it should be the lightest meal so at least have one chapati so that you're including these starchy foods in an appropriate proportion in your diet second eat 
eat lot of fruits and vegetables try to eat at least five portions of a variety of fruits and vegetables so it's like five a day fruits and vegetables provide a range of nutrients including vitamins and minerals such as folate vitamin c potassium dietary fiber and they are high in antioxidants also everybody keep on hearing about cancers and all those things vitamin c deficiency less of hemoglobin it is all because that we are not taking our daily dose of micronutrients the micronutrients are only present in fruits and vegetables in a major quantity so if you have five a day you are through with your micronutrient content of the day so eat lot of fruits and vegetables it could be fresh it could be frozen it could be canned it could be dried it could be juiced also yes there are diabetic patients we do not advocate having juiced fruits all right potato or albi or yam they are not counted as fruits or vegetables because they are high in starch though they are in that category only so what should be the portion an adult should have at least 80 gram in one portion and a young child may require less depending on their age size and a rough guide on one portion is amount they can fit in the palm of their hand so again just a brief about what is a portion one medium or seven cherry tomatoes one heaped or 15 ml spoon of your chia seeds flax seeds three heaped 15 ml spoons of chickpeas two spares of broccoli 150 ml of juice one apple two kiwi fruits 15 ml spoons of your beans again the same one slice of your watermelon seven strawberries or 3 heaped or 15 ml spoons of your peas so this is a rough idea about what portion is here what we are missing is the milk the dairy and why i have not mentioned here is because it depends on what kind of dairy you are taking it could be skimmed it could be uh, full cream it could be uh, even your eggs if we talk about the portion size it differ on the variety we are taking right eat more fish it as i told you it is a good source of protein and provides many vitamins and minerals white fish is low in fat oily fish are rich in long chain omega 3 fatty acids which are important for heart health try to eat at least two portions that is near about 140 grams of a fish a week and make sure it is not fried it is not deep fried okay now the question might arise that if we cannot deep fry the fish or we cannot fry the fish then how can we have it you can just slightly steam it and saute it in a pan so that the nutrients of the fish are retained if not that what you can do is probably you can bake it roast it or grill it after filleting cut down on saturated fat and sugars We all need some fat in our diet but it is important to get the right type and amount otherwise we all will land up into heart problems so cholesterol is a major problem that any time even if a 20 year old person is going for a check up the only thing that comes in the report is their hdl levels are going down and triglycerides or the ldl levels are going up right that is because we are not taking the right kind of fat in the diet so it is very important that you include both the kind of fats that is your saturated and unsaturated fats but how and in what proportion that depends again so what i would advocate here is have three to four types of oil in the kitchen make one vegetable with one another with another another with another so that you're getting the benefits of all the oils now because olive oil is on the rage so we are just consuming different kind of oils and uh, actually we are sorry what we are doing is we are going low on the conventional our uh, mustard oils and your ghee but and we are shifting our focus to olive oil but you know what 
olive oil has the low least smoking point so you cannot fry in olive oil you cannot cook your vegetables in olive oil it is best to use it uncooked that is better so desi ghee a teaspoon of desi ghee a teaspoon of mustard oil a teaspoon of your refined oil a teaspoon of your olive oil or canola oil or your rice bran oil is actually the right kind of combination that you should use throughout the day try to cut down on foods which are high in saturated fat and replace them with foods that are high in unsaturated fats such as vegetable oils oily fish avocados nuts and seeds do you know that most of us eat at least 20% more than the recommended maximum amount of the oils and approximately 11% of your dietary energy should come from the saturated fats so what we are doing is again i would like to highlight this that we are going overboard with our oils you really need to cut down too many sugar containing food drinks consumed between meals is associated with an increased tendency towards tooth decay especially in those with poor dental hygiene food and drinks high in sugar include sweets cakes biscuits carbonated drinks and whatever we are taking in between because as far as i know i haven't seen in my career any person coming up to me saying ma'am we take fruits in between or we take sprouts in between the meals and the most important thing is whenever you're going out to buy a packaged food it is important to check the labels how much saturated fat is there how much sugar they those food contain if it is more than 5 g of saturated fat in 100 g of food that means it is high in saturated fat thus because anyways you're not going to eat 100 g of portion you're going to go over with 200 300 g of portion thus in one package portion you're taking the daily dosage of fat and when you'll have your other meals you'll go overboard with your fat intake more than 15 g of sugar per 100 g of food means that the food is high in sugar and you need to cut down you really need to cut down on the extra sugars or table sugars for that matter eat less salt maintaining a normal blood pressure is important for health it is very much important because anyways we are dyslipidemic our cholesterol levels are already high right because of which our blood pressure is already on the run it is already high and when we go overboard with our salt it makes it even more messy so eating too much salt may raise blood pressure and lead to stroke and heart diseases <clears throat> approximately 3 quarter of the salt in our diet comes from processed foods such as breads breakfast cereals soups sauces all the ready made meals that we are taking and what we add in our meals and then again we indians we take salt with our fruits we take salt with our salads we include salt in each and everything that we are taking <coughs> six get active and be a healthy weight to achieve a healthy weight we need to balance the energy from the food and the drinks with the energy we use up through activity so it is very important to make a balance in between what we are eating and what we are deleting throughout the day being active can help maintain a healthy weight by using more energy being overweight or obese can lead to health conditions such as type 2 diabetes some cancers heart disease and stroke being underweight could also affect our health do you know that there are at least Uh, that you require at least 60 minute of physical activity to be healthy every day not week so any any person in between for i mean if 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 they are less than 40 years of age they should go for 60 minutes run and by run i do not mean brisk walking all throughout how you can do the activity is walk normally increase your speed maintain that speed and gradually decrease it 
then again walk normally increase maintain and decrease so this way you can have three to four laps of increased speed so that a lot of pressure is not there on your heart and adults that is more than 40 years of age should aim to be active and achieve at least 150 minutes of physical activity in a week so what do we mean by being active it could be brisk walking it could be gardening it could be using the stairs instead of using elevators any recreational activity like dancing cycling skateboarding playing or sports like basketball running or gymnastics very important about water we keep on asking people how many glasses of water you take throughout the day and the most common answer that we get is ma'am when we wake up in the morning we take at least a three to four glasses of water and then throughout the day probably two to three glasses of water but you know what having you you are not camel we humans are not camel that we are stocking up water in our body so it is it has to be taken periodically a another thing is if you will stock up your body with so much of water at one given point of time what will happen there would be too much pressure on the kidney because kidney is the filtering organ of our body all right so around two third of the body is made up of water but that water we should take at least periodically how i would advocate you to take water is have a glass of water when you wake up in the morning have a glass of water 10 to 15 minutes prior to your breakfast a glass of water half an hour after your breakfast again a glass of water before your lunch a glass of water after your lunch a glass of water before your dinner a glass of water after your dinner and a glass of water before sleeping so that accounts up to eight glasses of water and in between whatever you are taking is a bonus do not skip your breakfast eating breakfast provides us with the energy as well as some important nutrients that we need for good health breakfast can help to increase concentration alertness during the morning for example a healthy breakfast of whole grain bre uh, cereals or a slice of toast with low fat spread will give our body the energy and nutrients we need to start the day so you might have heard have your breakfast king size why it is said so is already seven to eight hours while you were sleeping you were in a fasting state your body do not does not have the energy to carry out the work throughout so that is why you need to have the important nutrients in the morning in the form of breakfast some people skip breakfast because they think it will help them lose weight but ultimately what results into is in the daytime they after skipping the menu, uh, breakfast they they eat snacks which are high in fat because the brain recognizes when the brain is in a starving condition the only thing the brain recognizes is anything which is high in fat or high in sugar and if you pile up your body with high in fat or sugar food it will result into weight gain only nothing else so what body says is that this person is not feeding me properly so whenever you are not feeding me properly and the next time you'll eat something i'll pile that up i'll store that up so that next time if you'll put me in a starving condition i should use those stores so it is very important not to skip your meals not just the breakfast but the meals as well sorry okay seven easy ways to start eating healthier at work first is ditch the junk empty all the calorie food that is around you that is your chips your wafers your unhealthy snacks that are stashed in your desk the less you are tempted by junk food the healthier you will eat make time for meals it's easy to forget to eat when you are slammed at the office so block off at least 30 minutes each day to walk away from your desk and eat something 
bring leftovers this is typically for those people who are working who does not have help at home and they are cooking their meals all by themselves so this is a very easy option that make an extra portion when you are cooking your dinner each night and you will have a healthy lunch to take to the office otherwise if you will not do like this because in the morning you don't have time to cook you will pound on to the junk food that is available in your canteen or somewhere near plan your meals prior if you know you are going to eat two to three meals or two snacks at the office plan ahead coming prepared will help you avoid getting too hungry or indulging on unhealthy junk food keep snacks at your desk forget vending machines around you stock up your desk drawer with dry fruits roasted snacks like muri roasted chana roasted bajra roasted jowar some granola bars probably so that whenever you feel hungry you are not going to a vending machine taking a bag of chips and indulging into it another thing is bring in a water bottle that is very important start start your day having a bottle full of water at your desk so that throughout the day when you see that bottle you will you will be tempted to drink the water rather than when you are already dehydrated right choose balanced snacks when planning snacks for work choose snacks with a combination of carbohydrate healthy fat lean proteins to boost your metabolism and feel fuller for a longer time rather than having a bag of chips healthy snacks for the office come to work prepared with healthy snacks and you'll improve focus increase productivity and avoid packing on pounds here are some food options that will help you feel satisfied at the office when you're not having your meals walnuts okay probably there is a myth revolving around walnuts that it is too hot to eat actually but walnuts they are high in high heart healthy omega 3 fatty acids and antioxidants probably a handful of walnuts would help you satisfy the hunger that is there apples they are loaded with pectin which helps suppress your appetite so eating an apple midday helps control blood sugars and also helps in weight loss greek yogurt greek yogurt is actually nothing it is a uh, when we just strain the yogurt we strain the whey protein out from the yogurt it is known as greek yogurt it is no better than the normal yogurt in such terms that it has twice as much protein as the regular yogurt because you are already straining out the whey out of it all right and it contains healthy bacteria known as probiotics to keep your digestive tract healthy green tea okay there's a lot of uh, rage around the green tea that have 3 4 5 6 cups of green tea a day but when you will keep on having green teas mind you you will not have time to eat food because what happens is the tannins that are present in tea they suppress the hunger and when the signal is not reaching to your brain that you're not that you're not hung that you're hungry then you not eat and at the end you will binge at night probably and you will go back home you will binge on those namkeens and snacks and papers that are available so it is generally advised not to have more than 2 cups of green tea which is already packed with lot of antioxidants oatmeal and blueberries just what you can do is it, since oatmeal is a car- complex carbohydrate so it pro- uh, provides you with steady and long lasting energy so and it helps you to feel uh, feel full for a longer time so you can add blueberries to your cooked oatmeal which are packed with nutrients that help you promote the brain function spinach salad mix up a fresh salad with 2 cups of spinach which is high in magnesium so that you know your body is working most of the time people say that we sometimes forget food things we have cramps we have body aches that is all because that you are not that your diet is not high in magnesium most of the indian diets 
they are too low in magnesium so a spinach probably a cup of spinach now it is winters you will get good amount of spinach in the market market would be flooded with the spinach you can at least in the winter's time have a cup of spinach on a regular basis oranges and almonds that is that is one thing to keep your body hydrated and oranges is almost available round the clock all the season in india so the best thing is even if you do not feel like having water you can have an an orange and you can have few handful of nuts almonds that is going to keep your body hydrated carrots and hummus hummus is nothing it is basically the chickpea uh, what would, what do we say it's uh, chickpea uh, grounded chickpea powder basically so when you add little bit of water to it and season it with herbs you can have it with long cut carrots again it is a very healthy option that you can just carry your chickpea powder to the office add little bit of water spice it with some herbs and with carrots you can have it and it's so it's a very good option even for your mid meals low fat cottage cheese yogurt granola bars and cherries are the few what to eat before the big day okay eating a balanced meal and hydrating before the start of a busy day could be diff- could bring a difference between a career changing presentation and an embarrassing flop in front of your bosses so a way just a three simple step thing that the night before if you feel anxious do some light stretching and read but minimize or avoid taking alcohol or over indulging in the food while a drink may help you may fall asleep initially but it 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 disrupts the normal cycle sleep cycle so do not go overboard with the food or drinks at night in the morning what you can do is when you sleep what happens is when you sleep the levels of the body stress hormone that is cortisol that rises to bring your cortisol level back in balance with a healthy breakfast of high carbohydrates so you actually need to have a big king size breakfast to bring down your stress hormones down all right so it can include probably a portion of carbohydrate one portion of lean proteins that could be your uh, milk or fish or probably a slice of chicken and healthy fats carbs are vital in this process why because as i already mentioned that carbohydrate the brain food is carbohydrate 60% of the food that is taken up by the brain is carbohydrate throughout the day drink a tall glass of water first thing in the morning and keep on drinking all day so this thing is going to keep your body calm so that you can carry out your work without being uh, anxious without being too nervous about the presentation or probably your other stuff so your prescription to thrive is first thing nutrition the three pillars is the nutrition physical activity and knowing your numbers so nutrition is by paying attention to the portions when eating out consider splitting an entree or your meal set regular times to eat three meals and no more than two snacks per day limit your saturated and trans fats increase daily intake of fruits and vegetables at least 5 so as i already told you fiber day should be the aim since fiber can increase the feeling of fullness aim for at least 2 to 3 servings of whole grain food per day limit sweetened beverages drink water or non fat or 1% fat milk for physical activity take the stairs instead of taking elevators whenever possible purchase a pedometer or download an application now because we it's a smartphone generation so download an application called pedometer and aim for at least 10000 steps per day display is exercise prescription in a visible place so whenever you're going out or what you can do is just download is exercise prescription from internet and you can stick it stick it up to the board 
in front of your uh, office space so that whenever you get time you can do those act activities if you drive to work or stores or park in a space far away from the door and then you should walk if you take public transportation get off a stop early and walk walk on your lunch break try exercising with friends or a group consider strength training for at least 20 minutes that is 2 to 3 times per week not regularly i should say numbers are very important bmi that is your body mass index cholesterol blood pressure blood sugar when you know these numbers you know what to do you know what what you need to cut down from your diet so that you can achieve and maintain a healthy weight and a healthy body so next step is that you have to make a choice and keep on moving i thank you all and uh, please write in your queries so that we can clarify it So, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, launching our. Uh, uh, I mean, we are actually trying to capture uh, small feedback from you uh, who have attended the session. Uh, you will be looking at the question on the screen, and uh, you will also have the options from which you can choose. The results will actually reach us. Thank you. In the meantime, you can also. Uh, to keep on uh, entering your questions or the queries in the questions window as usual thank you
So thank you so much for the feedback. We have one more question that we request uh, your uh, uh, responses. Please uh, say type it in the questions window. The question is, what other health topics will you be interested in to listen from the CII BHB webinar series? I repeat the question. What other health topics will you be interested in? Now, uh, we are now moving into the next segment of the program, that is the question and answer session. So, <clears throat> oh, I see a, a lot of questions here, Vartika. Uh, yeah. Okay, this question is from... C.Y. Kushala. C.Y. Kushala. Uh, how much is the normal range of BMI Indians? Yes, it is uh, in between 18.5 to 22.5 now because uh, already the obesity in Indians is rising. So we do, do not keep it as 24.9. Okay, uh, she has left, but for the benefit of the other audience, we can... Yeah, so Ishika Sharma is asking, rice bran is considered to be one of the healthy oils however it is said that they have heavy metals too uh, yes actually uh, rice bran is high in horizon oil though it is one of the good oils which has good combination of uh, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids but still i would advise you not to take it for a longer time keep on changing your oils that is very important anita is asking a question how to increase weight how to increase weight. All right. And you know, uh, don't stock up, uh, don't pile up on carbohydrates. That is very important because when one is asking to increase weight or they desire to increase weight, what they do is they keep on having food which is high in carbohydrate. Rather, have food high in protein so that your muscle mass is being built up in your body. And then you will achieve a normal weight first and gradually you'll, uh, your weight will start increasing. A question from, from Ajay Kumar. Is it possible for you to share the presentation through email? So I would like to mention here uh, <clears throat> to all our attendees that we have recorded the session and we will be uploading this uh, into our, uh, into our knowledge management portal that is www.mycii.in and we will be sharing the details of accessing the recording with all our resistance irrespective of the fact whether they have attended the live session or otherwise. So over to the... Next 